1955, the US Army demanded a new weapon as standard issue for troops in the field. Like a submachine gun, it had to be lightweight and capable of fully automatic fire. But like a rifle, it would also have to hit and penetrate a helmet at 450 metres. The new hybrid weapon would be called the assault rifle. An early contender, the M14, was effectively a World War II rifle modified for full automatic fire. Unlike the Tommy gun, it used high power rifle ammunition, heavy 7.62 millimeter shells packed with powder. Conventional wisdom held that this was the best way to guarantee accuracy at 450 metres. Ken Elmore is an instructor for Colt Defence and an authority on assault rifle technology. Can the M14 pass the helmet test in full automatic? weapon's heavy cartridge makes it move all over the place. No matter how hard you fight it, it just seems to get worse. Very rapidly out of control within three or four shots or straight from the air. Heavy cartridge means heavy recoil. You're only carrying around 150 rounds a man. On full auto fire, the gun is cycling at around 750 rounds per minute. The ammo's gone almost instantly, as fast as you can change the mags, with almost no hits. With the failure of the M14, it was time for a new designer to take a seat at the drawing board. In the mid-1950s, weapons manufacturer Armalite appointed a brilliant chief engineer named Eugene Stoner. Stoner was convinced that for long-range automatic fire, both gun and cartridges would have to be completely transformed. The M14 has a bend in the stock to keep the sights at eye level. But on firing, the recoil makes the whole gun rotate around this point, causing the muzzle to rise. In his new design, Stoner straightened things out and placed the stock in line with the barrel. Now the recoil goes directly back along the line of sight and the gun stays on target. Stoner then raised the sights to bring them back to eye level. The result was the distinctive profile of one of the 20th century's iconic weapons. The M16 assault rifle. It had a truly space age look and feel. Stoner used aluminium alloy for many vital components. The plastic handguards and buttstock gave it the nickname the Black Rifle. But the most controversial innovation was not in the rifle, it was in the cartridges. Stoner threw away the heavy 7.62 mm ammunition of the M14 and replaced it with a slimline cartridge of just 5.56 mm. The weight savings meant troops could carry twice as many fully loaded magazines into battle. But it seemed to a skeptical army that the tiny M16 cartridge was more suited to killing mice than men. How would the weapon perform in field trials? There's far less kick from the small cartridge. The weapon's straight profile means the recoil goes directly backwards into Ken Elmore's shoulder. With the light cartridges, um, low recoil, um, very maneuverable, um, easy to support in the field. It's far easier to keep the M16 trained on the target, even in automatic. The cartridges perforate the helmet fulfilling the specification, although they punch much smaller holes than the M14. 
the M16 seemed to be the weapon of the Army's dreams. And by 1965, it was ready to be fielded in Vietnam. But at first, troops in the field were not impressed. In the tropical humidity and mud of the jungle, the M16 revealed a worrying tendency to jam. There was a false rumor that a toy company had manufactured the plastic components, and the advertising slogan, you can tell it's Mattel, became a sarcastic new addition to army slang. But Eugene Stoner's design was not at fault. Instead, the problem was traced to poor maintenance. Proper cleaning kits were distributed, and army discipline did the rest. Well, the soldiers taking care of their equipment in a combat situation is absolute priority. You clean and maintain weapons before you do anything for yourself. You don't sleep, you don't eat, you don't do anything until that weapon is clean and maintained. Soldiers were still not convinced that the M16 would be effective in combat. Some didn't believe the slender cartridge could put a man down and keep him down. But the black rifle was soon spreading terror through the enemy ranks. The new cartridge was punching above its weight. The M16 bullet is exceptionally fast, almost one kilometer per second. When it strikes human tissue, the lightweight nose slows down, while the heavier base maintains momentum. The bullet tumbles end over end, creating a huge bending force which it cannot withstand. It's fully lethal. It, it leaves devastating wounds, and I don't know anybody walking around who's been hit by one. As a U.S. Army combat veteran, Ken Elmore would trust the M16 with his life. The M16 is by far my favorite rifle. I've carried it all over the world. I, I know the rifle front and back. I know every feel about it, every sound it makes. I would not trade that weapon for any other weapon around, literally. Literally. 